Behold, it's VHS Rewind. Hello, this is Mark, and you're listening and watching another VHS Rewind um, Christmas catalog. I, maybe not even another. This might be the first one I released for the season. I know there's another one that I did with um, Allison um, Venezio, I and that's going to show up at some point. I think we covered the 90s one. This one's practically 90s, um, and I couldn't think of a better person. I was like, who do I bring on to talk about late 80s, you know, culture and toys and everything? And none other than um, I had to stalk him a little bit on um, the, the good old X, formerly known as Twitter, um, Gino Cuddy. How you doing, Gino? Doing pretty well, Mark. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm coughing my way through life in this holiday season. And I'm going to try my best not to cough in everyone's ear. Um, Gino, I know you've been busy for a really long time. You and I kind of, um, you know, we're, we're like, I'm going to go do my thing. You do your thing. And somehow we ended up kind of meeting here in the middle. Um, just I couldn't be happier to have you back on the show. And I'm really happy to be back. Um, you know what? One of the things that you pop on every once in a while is the Oddity Archive. And I... I got to say, the Oddity Archive, if, if people don't know what the Oddity Archive is, would you agree that it's single-handedly one of the most consistent and educational and entertaining and wonderful channel on all of YouTube? <laughs> would you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, uh, Ben Monat, in the name of full disclosure, we are friends. But even if we weren't uh, attached in that manner, uh, his channel is, and, and his content is really, really well done and is really the only YouTube channel that I follow with any level of consistency because his content is always 100% quality. It really is. And he just released a new CD of his music. And um, this episode is brought to you by the Oddity Archive. No, it isn't, but it may as well be because we, we do love his work. And, uh, yeah, Ben, um, I I'm more friendly with Ben, you know, um, I've never met him and I really haven't spent too much time with him, but, um, he asked me to come on to that. Um, I think you were on it as well. Like kind of a tribute for like the 200th episode. Correct. And, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I just think what he does is worthwhile and people should definitely check out the Oddity archive. I think he's a Patreon is too, you know, too. So, you know what, instead of going out and spending money on, companies that hate you go and throw some money at somebody who loves you and ben would love to have your money so <laughs> the way i have to you know what i don't support ben um on the oddity archive i think i'm gonna have to visit patreon.com and go check it out because um i really do get a lot for um a value from his channel but if it's one of those things if, if uh if people are listening and they can um you know and they have a few extra bucks not everyone has a few extra bucks uh, word of mouth is also very valuable. Another service I want to thank out there is called wishbookweb.com. I don't know if they're still around. They could be a porn site for all I know. They <laughs> they supplied these books that we're going to be going through, these catalogs. And this really, um, it's really a labor of love, right? I mean, to scan all of this stuff, it, it's a tremendous undertaking. Indeed, um, indeed, and and I thank them as well for uh, the service that they provided that allowed us to do this today. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, we're talking about the um, the nineteen eighty eight Christmas Wish Book. Now you're younger than me, you're considerably younger, but do you remember there being annual catalogs? I don't know. Was this something that existed when you were little? Um, I can't say that I recall. But they probably were. I mean, I was born in 1995, and so th they, they, there probably were still some uh, some semblance of these things out there. It, it, it's probably they were winding down at this time. But I just can't recall. I, I recall more or less the Toys R Us books than I do yeah. the Sears ones. Um, the Toys R Us ones stuck around for a while. Um, Sears, um. I mean, they were all really focused towards Christmas this time of the year. And when I was a kid, you would get this, you'd circle what you want, and you really have a blast going through this. And it was a tremendous book. Um, this this particular one is 674 pages. Um, I hope you have your pee jug, because we're not getting up for the next six hours. 
I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you're like, are you serious? <laughs> so I'm just going to flip through this. But yeah, this is Sears, which um, I don't believe Sears is around anymore. Kind of a sad little thing. It, it is, but it's pretty much in purgatory or as close to that store as you can be without actually being there. And a lot of that, not to get too political here, but a lot of that is due to uh, Eddie Lambert, who really drove Sears into the ground. Um, really? Yeah. Um, in I, I am actually in some uh, retail uh, history circles uh, because I, I love dead retail and such. And uh, I follow a lot of the retail news and I have, uh, let's just say, an informant who's also a friend who tells me about these things. And uh, yeah, uh, Eddie Lampert, basically, I think the reason why he bought Sears and Kmart together is so that he could buy up the real estate, close down the stores and then resell the real estate to somebody else, I think. Don't quote me on that. I don't want to be held liable for anything, but I believe that that's the the, the reasoning behind it's an uh, interesting, Sears' ultimate demise. I think it's an interesting theory, but I wonder if it backfired because you know a lot of the places like Kmart around here and Sears, for instance, are vacant stores here. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like, okay, you own the real estate, but do you really own? You know, like what do you own? You own an empty, you know, store, right? Right. Um, I mean, uh, the in all actuality, uh, the Sears uh, nearest to me uh, was uh, located at the, uh, well, w was at one point the uh, Westfield Meriden. Now it's just known as the Meriden Mall. Mm -hmm. And uh, that one, uh, I was actually, I believe, one of the last ones to walk around that Sears uh, with a friend of mine. We actually shot video inside. And... Um, uh, that was, I believe, in 2018, and I believe it, it shuttered uh, somewhere around there. So it's been vacant for literally almost, uh, I would say, two to three or maybe even four years now at this point. I mean, I hate to say it, but Sears was always the store you walked through to get to the mall for me. Right. I was never really too interested. But when I was a kid, you know, you flip through it. Um and you see all this cool, you know, kind of kitschy, cheap stuff, too. Like, stuff you find at a garage sale for three bucks. Like, this phone that's supposed to be, like, the old phone, but it's touch tone. <clears throat> right, right. The, you know, the beginning of the catalog, this is the kind of stuff where it's, like, gift baskets. <laughs> stuff. Like, I don't know who buys this and who it's for. Like, I don't, it's really kind of like, ah, oh, just get them this um, step stool. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Um, now we get into the sexy part of this. We get this lady in um, basically a, I don't know, a, a mitt. Like this thing looks. It does look like an oven mitt. Yeah, You're it looks right. like an oven mitt or that same kind of material. Um, so we're going to flip through a lot of this kind of cornier stuff. Woohoo. You got a little negligee here. There's a lot of. Stuff like um, self-care type of things. A lot of belt buckle. Well, maybe not a lot of them. But these were like a thing in the 80s, you know, in the 90s, I guess. I'd rather be bowling. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's it's some cute stuff. Let's see. Um, I know you were talking about um, some colognes. On, um, yeah. Do you mind talking a little bit about that? Because you found some, I, I think you were going a little retro, right? Um, well, here's the thing. Um, I actually have an old bottle uh, of, um, gosh, what's the name of it? Uh, it's, uh, it's a musky cologne. Mm -hmm. And it actually belonged to my father. Oh, okay. uh, it was one of the last bottles of cologne that he had before he passed on. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, I have that. Um, and I am a bit of a cologne connoisseur uh, in that, but mostly on a budget. So primarily my allegiances is to like the Bath and Body Works of the world. Um, and I collect quite a lot of colognes from there. Probably my favorite uh, uh, cologne for this time of year would be a uh, cologne by the name of Smoked Old Fashioned, which is uh, supposed to be patterned off of uh, uh, an old fashioned drink. Um, yeah, and, the old uh, fashioned, yeah. Right, and it has uh, notes of smoked orange bitters, bourbon, vanilla, 
And uh, I believe there's some woodsy notes in there as well. It's a really beautiful scent. Um, and speaking of beautiful, look at that robe that that I was male. Say, kid, Gino, is this the robe that you are you kind of won for Christmas? <laughs> I what I actually really would love to have that robe that Mel Gibson is wearing there. <laughs> he should just be holding a pipe, I think. Right, right. I love that robe. I I want a robe like that in my life. That is nice. Um, it is. I have a feeling it needs to be dry cleaned. Not one hundred percent sure. Though. Um, one. Um, so speaking of cologne, I do want to just mention. Um, I like I like certain colognes, and my son is now fifteen, so he's getting a little bit into the colognes, and um. So uh, the the colognes I like, uh, one of them is a little bit of a throwback to the 90s. So people might even be like, my dad wears that. And it's like, hey, I'm 50. Get over yourself. So <clears throat> um, is um, Fahrenheit, which is um, something that you smell, you know, you can really find in a lot of different places. Um, but um, one of the more modern ones I really like is um, Jean-Paul Gaudier's Les Men, which is um, mm -hmm. a really good one. And the other one is um, Sauvage, which is uh, a newer cologne. <clears throat> it's like the one that Johnny Depp kind of promotes. And uh, my son yeah. really likes that one. Yeah. When I was uh, vacationing in Florida last year, uh, I believe one of the, uh, and this speaks highly of, speaks volumes of the uh, payment that the workers get at the resorts. But I, uh, there was a, a, a worker cleaning out the pool uh, that I was in, mm -hmm. and um, I, he was wearing a really nice-smelling cologne. And he told me that he was wearing Sauvage, so I could attest to that. That is a very beautifully sm beautiful-smelling uh, cologne. I don't know what the notes are in it, but it's a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. You know, it's funny, because I think Johnny Depp, I'm like, oh, maybe there's, like, Marlboro uh, notes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it smells like cigarettes or something but um but no 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 i like it a lot it's more to me it, it smells like a classic cologne like it doesn't right uh and my son really likes it so i'm not gonna wear the same as him so he's kind of adopted that and i, I had a tiny little bottle so for hanukkah i'm getting him a like a, a good size bottle of it and it ain't cheap um but yeah this thing though i i really would love to find a robe like this i think this would be pretty awesome these oh, little, I would love that robe. But yeah. Yeah. These kids right now, they are in their forties, I guess. Or thirties. <laughs> these twins, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, they would be um thirty yeah, they'd be in their late thirties. And it's and you know, as you go further back in this project and you and you look through some of these, what's gonna be the, the dismal irony is that if you see kids in a catalog from say nineteen fifty mm -hmm. or, or even yeah. further back. The, the potentiality that they still be even alive at that point would be, yeah. you know, now that I would love, I would love <laughs> that. Own, I would, I never see, here's the thing. I Thank love you, mag you magic. I, I love the idea. I, I love magic. My favorite comedian is Tommy Cooper, who is a British yeah. comedian and, and a magician. Mm -hmm. I would love, I, 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 I it never occurred. Yeah, it never occurred to me to get into it when I was a little kid, but I would love to own a magic set like that and perfect the tricks. You know, when I was little, I liked this stuff, and I tried it. I was not good at it. I'm still not good at it. Um, one time I was in Vegas, and I, um, I I went to one of these like, kind of secondhand shops, you know, like um, like a hawk shop or whatever you call it. So I would go in there, and I'm looking at all the stuff that people have sold, these guitars and all this kind of stuff. And this guy mm -hmm. had an entire volume of like the magician's thing. It was like a hundred years old and it was like every trick that you can imagine. I'm like, this is amazing. And yeah, I was talked out of it and uh, for good reason, because all my, as you know, I love it, but I'm not good at it. <laughs> this kid, he would probably blow me away. Like we were watching him and be like, you know, pulling a coin out of my ear and be like, how'd you do that? <laughs> Right. That is my card. <laughs> how'd you put? How'd you put the cigarette through the coin? Yeah. Look, Sorry. Killer man. pin. Killer pinball machine over there in that corner too. By the way. What did you think of these little pinball machines when you were a kid? Did you ever see these things? Um. Again, I think that they were phasing stuff like that out uh, by the time I I was a kid, and it, and also you know they got a point to the fact that I was really an introvert and I stayed indoors most of the time as a child. Unfortunately, I would have loved to have gone out and actually experienced life. Um. But 
I, I, I will say that I have come across some of those and they are great and they are addictive. I, I never got into, I never got into pinball, you know, pinball is mm. just one of those kind of games where um, I, I see the enjoyment. Right. And it was also one of the first games that I thought looked pretty good on a video game system. So I, for some reason, if you even Atari go back to the 2600, it looks okay with the pinball machine, the movement of the ball and everything. But I don't know. I never got into pinball. I never got into these things. I never really had one um, that was like this. Um, well, I also had experience with uh, since I was, I, I wouldn't say because I didn't get internet until like 2012. So I was a really late convert to internet in general. Uh, but as somebody who had computers that growing up that I mainly did gaming on, I was really familiar with the 3d space pinball and I really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. Minesweeper. Oh yeah. Minesweeper. Yeah. Badass. <laughs> um, these things, I feel like you can go into like a goodwill and find these, these cassette yeah. rock and roll mixes, usually low quality mixes on low quality tape. Look at this guy. This is the other guy just grown up. <laughs> right. Right, balloon magic. Yeah. Balloon man. <laughs> I'm a balloon man. I know somebody who went to Harvard and she now makes a living doing um, balloon animals, like being hired to do balloon stuff. And I, I always wondered how this happened, right? You you went right. to Harvard, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, but, I, you know, and not to insult your friend. But, no, no, know, I'm not. Yeah. Uh, she's a lovely girl. It's just the hell happened here. <laughs> you know? Right. Right. Yeah. So um, it's kind of interesting. Reminds me of old little Lulu and little Audrey cartoons where uh, the person uh, would go into college and come out with their degree in their uh, cap and then uh, be immediately thrust into the world of street sweeping. <laughs> <laughs> um, is this a safe? Yeah, look at this. Hey, let's, uh, where's the, it might be on the next page. I'm, lo I'm looking for the price on this. I'm sorry. I got E. I don't have F. <clears throat> oh, there it is. So yeah, this is a 70 pound safe. It's $130. It's pretty wow. big, right? Look at this. It's like a big end table. Yeah. That's that's a beautiful uh, little item there. Yeah. I, I want to, you know, again, a beautiful thing for the home. But what I would like is that clock immediately to the right. Yeah, the the nautical uh, clock. Yeah, I, I, I've always, I mean, I haven't been board ship a lot in my life, but I've always sort of had a fancy for you know that aesthetic of the nautical aesthetic. So sure, you know, you know, especially being a fan of Popeye, all, you know, all my life, you know. And, uh, so I, I would love to have a clock like that. Um, you know, in, I, I think I told you, my son is doing sea scouts now. He's become very nautical. Um, I'm not nautical. I, I appreciate the look, but I, I'm not a nautical person. Um, so like I can barely swim and we, um, he, he's really into this now where he kind of meets up with his, um, with his, I think it's called a boat, boat 18. Um, they have this history of bootlegging and everything in the area, which is just phenomenal. You know, like going back to like the twenties and thirties and like underground tunnels on long Island and all of this, like <laughs> right. really, really dark history, which I, I, you know, maybe it's questionable that I think that that's the exciting stuff, but like, bootleggers and brothels and all this kind of stuff. It's kind of crazy. This stuff, so, oh, I'm sorry, go on. So what are you saying, Mark? You're, you're not, you're not nautical, but nice. <laughs> I, I'm, what I'm saying is that I, um, I encourage bad behavior. <laughs> 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 um, so over here, this, have you ever been to a cracker barrel? Uh, no, I have not. Do you know what they are? Like, like it's, yeah, it's a, it's a restaurant of some sort. But it's, like, kitschy. And on the wall, right. they have stuff like this everywhere. Um, you know, like, they'll have saws and levels and weird, dusty stuff just hanging around the restaurant. And 
that was just kind of one of those weird things. Like, I, I think this is a weird thing to put up as decoration. Right, right. Um, now here for basically you and me, I would say, I'm going to just kind of throw it out there. As a kid, I would go to my local library and I would take out tapes of uh, old time radio shows. You know, I would listen to suspense and um, old comedy albums and, you know, all of this stuff that people are like, you know, <laughs> your kid's 11 years old or nine years old and he's listening to, like, you know, Jack Benny, you know, and it's what I liked, you know, and um, if there's one thing that I think people can agree is that um, I've done things that I like that other people don't like. And I think maybe that's one of the reasons why you and I have remained friends, because both of us see the world like that. We do things not because other people like it or what other people's opinions of it might be, but because we genuinely like them. Right. I mean, I love old time uh, comedy as well. I've uh, actually through my work with Ralph Solentano of uh, film collectors, collected film for over 60 plus years. I've become rather immersed in, into the world of old comedy from uh, that time period and uh, become kind of a connoisseur of it. Mm -hmm. And I quite in, enjoy it quite a bit. I mean, I, I was a fan of the Marsh Brothers since I was a seven year old kid. But I, I, you know, within the past decade, I've really immersed myself in the classic comedy and really enjoy it. I mean, as far as radio comedy is concerned, my, probably my favorite would be the old Lum and Abner radio program. And I want to give a shout out to my friend Donnie Pitchford, who is an old time radio historian, in particular, a Lum and Abner historian who I had on my television program, Gino in the Evening. Hey, and, Donnie. Uh, and uh, do, do you he, know if he has a website or I mean, that that was where I kind of wanted to lead this because, Gino, you do a lot of work, a lot of right. a lot of um, maybe similar stuff that I do. Thankless work. You know, we, we do we preserve because we love. Right. And right. you preserve stuff like there's no tomorrow. Like you you were just converting some um, Christmas videotape that you discovered. Um, you do restorations of silent films. You've done a tremendous amount of work with the film Metropolis, which of course everyone knows. Um, could you go down, could you give us like a little bit of an overcap of what you do um, and where people can find you? Because I, I think just like the Oddity Archive, I think Gino Cuddy is somebody who people should be subscribed to personally. Thank you for, uh, for the kind words, Mark. And, this uh, episode's certainly. brought to you by Gino Cuddy. <laughs> Um, <laughs> sorry. It, yeah, as, as far as, you know, the things that I do, uh, there's quite a bit that I do. Um, I, uh, probably my bread and butter, uh, I, there are two things right now that I'm, uh, doing that are pretty much my bread and butter. And, and, uh, numero uno on that list is, uh, preserving the film collection of Ralph Solentano and, uh, just a bit about Ralph. He is a, a nice gentleman from um, uh, the Massachusetts area who's been collecting film for well over 60 plus years. Mm -hmm. And uh, he specializes in old time comedies. And uh, I've been uh, preserving and archiving his collection and online on my YouTube channel, Gino's House of Rare Films. And uh, for since 2019, I've been doing this work. Actually, I think 2018 is when I started. And uh, I've uh, been preserving, you know, I, I preserved like the work of comedians Clark and McCullough, for example, mm -hmm. um, and uh, Tim Burton and Rooney, uh, Moran and Mac, com comedy themes that are largely forgotten about in uh, this day and age, but were wildly popular back in the 1930s. Um, Pre code and, type uh, of stuff, right? Correct, correct. And, uh, you know, through this endeavor, I've actually been contacted through other uh, by other people. Like uh, there was a gentleman by the name of Ray Cabana, who's a mystery film and crime fiction connoisseur. And uh, through him, I preserved a film called The Lineup from uh, 1929, which was pre which had previously been unseen for over 90 plus years. And uh, so I preserved that. And I am currently in talks with a gentleman by the name of Kerrigan Mahan. Uh, who uh, a lot of people would recognize as a voiceover artist for a lot of anime, and he was also Goldar in the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Well, his dad was a gentleman by the name of Billy Mahan, and uh, 
he was the little boy in what was called the Jones Family series of comedies uh, made at 20th Century Fox back in the 1930s. Mm -hmm. And I'm in talks uh, of getting uh, a series of uh, films from him starring his dad to hopefully preserve on my YouTube channel for future generations to see. Gino, Uh, I just want to interrupt you for just one moment. I'm going to flip through this as you're talking just so that, you know, um, it'll just be a visual thing. But please continue. Well, if, if you I, see something interesting, let me know and I'll stop. I'm just. <laughs> yeah. I apologize if I'm going a little no, no, long no. Bit here. And uh, probably my other uh, thing that I do that I'm proud of what I do is uh, I'm actually a columnist, columnist for a uh, film review website by the name of Cinema Craze. Mm. And uh, I, I have a column called Western Wednesdays, where, uh, ev- where every other Wednesday, um, and uh, my beautiful Garfield phone, by the way. Yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, the, I want to uh, see how much that costs now. Oh, go on. <laughs> and uh, before I go into the no, work that if you can go work- into the Western Wednesday, is it Wednesday Westerns or Western Wednesdays? Western Wednesdays, okay. uh, and uh, it's a biweekly column where I review uh, old, uh, where I review silent westerns as well as B westerns from the 30s, 40s, and uh, the beginning of the 1950s, starring the likes of Ken Maynard, Hoot Gibson, Tom Mix, William S. Hart, uh, Sunset Carson, Roy Rogers, Gene Autry, the really old-fashioned cowboy stars from back in the day that people remember watching on television back in the 1950s. Uh, because that's what I'm drawn to. I'm drawn to those old B-Westerns starring those cowboys from back in the day. Um, and uh, hopefully someday I could uh, put the do it to it and actually write a book about some of these guys, because uh, in the year 2023, a lot of these guys have fallen out of favor. And uh, unfortunately, their, their careers haven't really been revived all that much. And hopefully through the work that I'm doing, uh, I am able to, uh, you know, resurrect the, the lives of these people because they truly were the cinematic superheroes of their day long before Marvel and DC invaded our screens. Mm. Um, By the way, do you see this on here? The, uh, it's oh, about, yeah. It's going about 51 bucks, about 70 bucks right now, the bid's up to. Oh, and I actually wanted to discuss this Garfield phone. Uh, there are a couple of interesting things about it. One, <laughs> it, it appears in a Godfrey Ho uh, ninja flick starring Richard Harrison. You know, you see tough guy Richard Harrison using a Garfield phone to that's pretty awesome to to converse with a, a mafia with a ninja mafioso hitman or something, and it's <laughs> hilarious. But the other thing that's really interesting about these Garfield phones is the aftermath of them. Like, there, I don't know if you've ever heard this story, but uh, these Garfield phones are apparently have apparently since the 1980s have been washing ashore on this island in France. What? Yes. And uh, apparently it's because there was an old shipping crate that sank or something, and th- and and they've been washing ashore on Get this one here. island in France. Yeah, look it up if, if, if you can. Yeah, it's a, they've been washing ashore on this island in France. That's, and a, that's the, a really interesting thing. Yeah. yeah. What about this one? <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the next page. Go to the next page. <laughs> um, <laughs> when I was a kid, everybody wore the Reeboks like this. But <clears throat> so, Gino, where would be the best place to find it? Because I'm um, on uh, Gino's House of Rare Films um, on YouTube, and um, you have like twenty thousand subscribers. I think it's incredible. You've come a long way. You've um, have a lot of stuff. You you seem to put up stuff um, every week. Um, or at least, you know, it, you just put up in the past two days, you put up three new films. I see, um, one of your favorites up here, um, Wheeler and Woolsey. And, you know, it, it's, I think it's great what you're doing. <clears throat> I think it's important to preserve this stuff. I hope YouTube understands how important it is. That's another big aspect, um, for, uh, pre- preserving all of this stuff. Thank you. Thank you. And I, and I do hope that, you know, not only YouTube, but I do hope that the studios uh, that, you know, control the rights to some of this material that's sort of been orphaned, unfortunately, do see the value of this material and someday sees to it that a proper, like either Blu-ray release or, or DVD release or even a streaming release of some of this material in pristine uh, condition mm-hmm. could come to fruition. I mean, I have uploaded the 
at least uh, the, the complete Republic Pictures filmography of uh, Sunset Carson, whose work had, had been previously out of circulation for years and years and years until I started uploading this material. And, uh, you know, I, I've had to go through, and, and I don't mind saying it, I've had to go through gray market sources in order to acquire most of this material for preservation because you just can't find a lot of this material anywhere. It reminds yeah. me of the early, um, around the time this catalog came out, it's when I was getting into film. And if I wanted to find a copy of like Cocksucker Blues or El Topo or any of the early Jodorowsky stuff or even early Scorsese stuff, like those shorts, you had to go to like Kim's video and talk to a guy in Manhattan and you had to like get sent down to like Canal Street and go into some shady place and buy some crappy VHS of it. Correct. A lot of money, too. Like, we're talking, you know, at the time, spending, I think I spent $65 on a copy of Cocksucker Blues, which was an awful copy. Skidoo. Skidoo is another one that was completely unavailable. Now it's available. Right, right. And Skidoo is a perennial favorite of mine for for, for a variety of reasons. Groucho's last film. Yeah, yeah. And uh, some great music in there by uh, Henry Nielsen, I believe. Mm, it's It's an interesting movie. Yeah. Um, little mini vacuum cleans dust nooks out of your computer keyboards. Look at that. It's kind of a modern looking keyboard even. Yeah, it is. And uh, that's a handy dandy little device, which I still believe they make some variant of that today. I tried buying one of these not too long ago because I use compressed air. They mm -hmm. suck. The, uh, the yeah. only difference is now you can recharge them. <laughs> they, they can recharge crap. Is right. essentially it. Dad's apron. You have little hooks. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Um, this is also for dad. Nice martini set. So some of this stuff is trash. I'm going to get to the like kind of more pop culture stuff. But then I see stuff like this and I have to stop. Like, what is this? The mighty car vacuum. It looks like a, a vehicle out of some eighties sci-fi movie. It looks, you know, you know, it's funny you say that when I, when I see that, you know what it reminds me of? One of the vehicles in one of the vehicles in Megaforce. Yeah. Megaforce. I can totally see this being a Megaforce thing. It just needs wheels and you get rid of this handle. Actually, you could probably put a cannon on that. I was that the, the, the front of that thing, especially, you know what the front of that thing kind of reminds me of in a weird way. What? It reminds me of the notorious uh, NBC flop super train. You know what? I think. I'm, I'm looking it up. We need it side by side. That might be what I'm thinking. Oh man! All right, wait until you see this. Found it on my on me TV. I'll bring it over to the screen. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> I mean, the theme song for Super Train rocked, but other than that, Look I mean... That. I mean, it's kind of... Yeah. It's a, there's a similarity to it, absolutely. Right, right. Um, all right, let's see what else. I don't know how many times we have to shine our shoes and... Stuff our socks. And... How many calculators you really need? Hand puppets. <laughs> These hand puppets, jeez. All right, let's... This is all... I right, what what well there was a nice keyboard up there. This I one. like keyboards. I'm a sucker for keyboards. You know, I went to a garage sale not too long ago. And yeah. um I don't have it in front of me. It's downstairs. And I said, "How much is this keyboard?" It was like a pretty nice size old 80s Casio one. Um mm -hmm. and he's like, "You could just have it." He's like, "I don't know if it works." I'm like, "I mean, I've, all right, so I'm sold already, right? Because it's like um, and he had like some like small, like, um, shelf thing that I was buying. So he's like, Oh, you can just have it. And I'm like, why do you, I mean, I think it's really nice that he would do that, but it's like, if it doesn't work, if I came home, I put batteries in it. It worked for 10 minutes <laughs> and then it stopped working. So uh, I got to open it up and see what's up because it's a pretty cool looking keyboard. Um, I'm pretty is. lucky in garage sales. Um, I picked, yeah. you know what I picked up a really... Do you go to garage sales? Are you a garage sale junkie like me? Um, uh, not as much as I'd like to. I mean, I used to be a a, a, a thrift hound. Yeah. 
But, uh, you know, I, and I found and I have found some pretty nice things at, at thrift shops and such and uh, tag sales and estate sales and such. See this? Um, that thing's yeah, awesome. that's. Yeah, and that's the other thing. You know, people forget, you know, because now that McDonald's restaurants look like middle-aged, you know, people in a midlife crisis. Yeah, it looks like and, Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, and instead of looking like fun, you know, places for families to go to, mm -hmm. you know, people forget just how all over the place McDonald's was back in the day. I mean, in the McDonald's characters and such that you never hear from anymore. That's why I was so surprised. Uh, I believe it was earlier in the year when they brought back, when they celebrated Grimace for that short time, you know, when they had the Grimace party and the Grimace shake and everything, because really those characters, not even Ronald McDonald are even in the uh, McDonald's lore anymore. Like mm -hmm. they have McDonald's ads, but they don't have Ronald McDonald or, or Ducky or Grimace or the Hamburglar or any of those people. I think in the they're bringing anymore. them back. I think they're slowly bringing them back. Well, I hope that uh, Mayor along with cheese, <laughs> yeah, I hope that along with bringing back the, uh, the the McDonald's characters, I'm hoping that they also re remodel their stores to look like they did back in the '80s and '90s because they because to me the the red uh, the red red and yellow really yeah yeah the red and yellow and the arch and the facade and everything. Mm -hmm. That was far more inviting than the cold, distant office building looking. Now, this is going to break your heart. They had one in my yeah. town two years ago. It was it was like it was built in 82, you know, and he just right. tore it down and put up that Minecraft one. And I'm uh, like, why? Why would you do it? Um, but, you know, you can't. McDonald's is a weird company, you know, it is. Um, and it's not like they're doing it and getting more space out of it. It seems, um, right. what about this Alf watch? Is that something you would, uh, it's pretty huge. I don't know. Man. <laughs> All right. I found I it was... on eBay though. Look, <laughs> <laughs> not bad though. 22 bucks. You can oh. own your own Alf watch. That's nice though. It's not that... bad. Right. I mean, it... It's kitschy, but I would totally rock that because I'm kitschy myself. I love it. The watch doesn't it's work beautiful. though. Aw, but I'm sure that could probably get easily repaired if some, if some, you know, really uh, inventive you, person got access to it. I think what you want to say is no problem. <laughs> right. You know, it's, it's funny. It's funny about Elf because you know Elf. You know the merchandising for it you know, was handled by Coleco. And my mom worked for Coleco. That's right. Uh, I forgot you said that. I forgot you told me that a while ago. Yeah. Um, she was with the company from, I believe, the early, the, the late 80s until they went up, went belly up in uh, the mid-90s. She was actually laid off from Coleco. And she was uh, secretary, I believe, to the vice president of sales planning. Wow. And, uh, she, yeah, she worked right out of West Hartford and, uh, she had a lot of material from there that unfortunately has gone the way of the dodo bird, mm. but you know, they had Alf, they had wrinkles dogs, which you don't even see anymore. They had write ons. I mean, they were far more than just the oh, video. Yeah, Coleco company. Was a huge, huge, huge right. company, especially in the eighties and nineties. Right. Right. And Alf was one of the products that they carried uh, along with the Cabbage Patch dolls, which were wildly popular in the 1980s. If anything, I would say that the Cabbage Patch kids built Coleco. I mean, we had the Coleco vision beforehand. Right, right. Um, and Coleco, I think, was a boy's toy brand before Cabbage Patch. I want right. to say, you know, like kind of tanks and trucks and stuff like that. You know, um, these are cute, I guess. I was never much of a Sesame Street fan as a kid. I like Snoopy. You know you know where Snoopy is huge? Um, I just learned this from uh, Lydia Kikuchi, who is a Japanese woman who lives in Australia. But she, she, and she'll visit Japan every once in a while. And she said Snoopy is huge in Japan. Huge. And it makes really? sense. It kind of makes sense. I see it. There's a certain Hello Kitty vibe. I think with Snoopy. Right, right. Snoopy. Um look at the McDonald's was a big thing, man. You could you could put a McDonald's raincoat on your kid 
and they can go to school and they're not going to get made fun of, you know? <laughs> right. It was cool. Right. It was a brand. Like this backpack, it's not bad, yeah. especially since my name is Mark. Um, yeah. That is a nice backpack. It is, with, right? Uh, yeah. 10 bucks. All right. So we're still in like the cheap, not cheap gifts, but the easy gifts. Like kind of like, let's get to the, um, oh, here we go. There you go. There you go, Gino. That brings your Italian out in you. Oh, yeah. Are these 14 yeah. karat gold? Wow, these are, look at this. It's $4,000. Sears wasn't messing around back in the day, man. <laughs> He's like, I love black pearls. All right, so I'm going to blast through the jewelry. Do you want to see any of the jewelry? I mean, I could stop at the watches. Maybe that'll be kind of cute. Well, the jewelry is beautiful, but, you know, I it's don't not, know. Yeah, it's what... not my forte personally. Um, you get a lot of crosses. I don't know if the Jews have made it to this uh, catalog or any other religion for that matter. Sterling silver. All stuff you'd probably see on Dynasty. Yeah, right. It's um. Well, actually, no. From Dynasty, it would probably come from flipping blooming Bloomingdale's. Yeah. Or um. So here, all right, we get some cute watches here. Look at this. It's like fake swatch. Watch it. Yeah. Um, the California Whoa. Raisins, they were really big in that period of time. Pepsi. I'd wear the Coke watch personally. Isn't it yeah. a little bit weird, though, how a, a Mar- food brand right. made its way into pop culture? And is it that way now? I'm wondering. Uh, I'm trying to think of an example. Well, Coke, you know, for, for example... You know, I mean, they, uh, I don't know if they originated it, but they were largely responsible for a lot of the Santa Claus mythos sure. that we have today, you know, yeah. and uh, it's uh, interesting to, to look at that and see like all the Coke paraphernalia that's been sold throughout the years. It's really, really fascinating stuff, you know. I mean, there are people who probably don't even drink the stuff now who just rapidly uh, collect this material. Yeah. But what about a Qbert game watch? Oh, those are cool. Those, those are, are cool. pretty cool. I think I had one. I don't remember the game. They didn't last long. Like these are game. These are watches that I would treat like crap. Probably I would get them maybe when I was too young, so I was spoiled. But here we go. Vintage Cubert on eBay, hundred and fifty dollars. Holy Toledo! Right. That seems a little excessive. You know what? Good luck to them. Look at this. There's another one down here. Scramble. But I don't know. I mean, I wish them luck. <laughs> yeah. It's like those people that think that black diamond Disney tapes are worth a thousand bucks. Yeah. But you know what? You get one dummy. Right. Maybe it's, not it's one like... dummy. It's not even nice because people look at that and they're like, oh, maybe it is worth that. And they take that risk and, you know, they blow their money. Right. 20 bucks though. If we knew, Gino, we could have gone back in time, bought like 10 up. Right. More money by 20. Right. Um, Pee Wee Herman watch. Can't go wrong with that. Right. California Raisin watch. I, I just, I remember them being a big deal. I just don't know if I really got too invested. All right. We're back to the stuff that. Um, nice was, jewelry box as well. Yeah, they're nice. Not really my cup of tea. Um, Disney watches. <clears throat> it's probably worth a fortune now. This woman is like, oh. I'll take one of everything. All that Oliver and Company material and uh, the film. You know, it's funny about certain films like Oliver and Company and, and whatever. Uh, you know, that film just recently celebrated its 35th anniversary. Oh, really? Uh, Yes, and uh, it's it's funny because, you know, they touted it, big film when it came out, but now it's virtually forgotten about. It's like a lot of films, you know, from Disney's past, you know, it's like that film, The Black Cauldron, The Black Hole, a lot of that stuff is just like virtually forgotten about, but was so massively merchandised and popular back in the day, you know, and films that I love. I love films like The Black Hole. You do the, like The Black Hole? I found it very difficult. Even yeah. as a kid, I found it to be a difficult movie. And it was, I know it's Disney's first live action movie. 
Or no, no. The first live action sci-fi movie? Was it? I, I forget what it was. Well, it was, certainly what's their first film no. to garner a PG rating. Maybe that was it. Um, I could definitely see that uh, opinion. I could definitely see because there are parts of the film that are slow and they, and they do dr- drone. But, you know, it, 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 there's something about that film. It, you know, it's the John Barry music that I love. It's especially the ending, the acting of Maximilian Schell. I absolutely adore the black hole. You know, I don't watch it as often as I probably should, mm-hmm. but it is a really good film that, that I enjoy. Uh, but I I do understand uh, people's uh, uh, dissension towards it. Yeah, I mean, or, when I was a kid, I think I was I was a Star Wars nerd my whole life, right? So I'm right. going to the black hole because the black hole is supposed to, you know, be kind of like it's going to be just as good as Star Wars, and it was just very different. And you know, looking back, the cast is kind of incredible. You have Tony Perkins, you know, you have some some amazing stuff going on. There was just something about it. I just didn't, it didn't work for me. Um, I should revisit it one of these days. I think I watched it maybe 15 years ago. And uh, this guy looks ridiculous. Um, <laughs> hey. You know, being 88, yeah, I'm surprised we're not seeing more mustaches, but maybe it wasn't like a thing in 88. <laughs> There's your robe, Gino. And those boxers. <laughs> Man, I'd love I'd love to own all that stuff in red. I just want the dog. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you got sports stuff. Um, I'm gonna try to get to the um one thing that I was surprised not to see in this in this book. What was wrestling material. You know, I mean wrestling was a big thing in eighty eight, so I'm really kind of surprised that we're not yeah. I wonder why. The WW, it was WWF then that was like at least the big one, right? Well, there's WWF. I believe WCW was just coming. Uh, I believe Ted Turner either was close to or he had already purchased the NWA to turn it into World Championship Wrestling so he could have that be on a superstation, uh, TBS. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, 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 wrestling was huge in the 80s. Thanks, uh, you know. I mean, I will say that Vince McMahon killed a lot of territories with his unscrupulous methods, but at the same token, he did bring wrestling to the national stage, which, you know, helped uh, the sport become what it is today, for, right. for, for, for better or worse. Now, that's another thing that you do restorations on, right? Yeah, I'm uh, currently working on uh, some uh, projects uh, involving the old UWF uh, promotion, the Universal Wrestling Federation, which was founded by Herb Abrams and the in uh, 1990 and uh, sadly only existed between 1990 and 1996 and uh i've been sort of uh, revitalizing the uwf in some fashion with the uwf golden oldies series where every now and then i release a old uwf match with uh some narration thrown in and uh hope uh people see that you know it really was a decent promotion all things considered you know you know, given the rather negative reputation that it has had throughout the year. Check out the snow code maker. Oh, yeah. That thing's badass. It's pretty amazing. And look at how brightly colored everything was. This is where, before we all got depressed after 9-11. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of true. Um, What is this? Oh, is this a tumbler or something? Or not really. Oh, this is a little oven, I think. <clears throat> to, like, melt... Well, I'm not really sure. Glass or something? I think it would melt like plastic or something. Yeah. These little stained glass things. Pottery craft. Look at this. Play-Doh Burger King Whopper. Oh my gosh. Look at this thing. <laughs> Holy it's cow. Beautiful. It's it is beautiful. actually really kind of cool. I yeah. mean... From a collector's standpoint, you go into like a Goodwill and see this, you grab it, right? I mean. <laughs> and remember all the great toy brands from back in the day, Kenner, Galoob, you know, all these brands that don't exist anymore. Oh, that was the, them sort of the days. LJN. I'm oh, man. Here, look at this. Um, we have a. Pl- this is not nearly as much as I thought it would be. We have a buy it now of nine twenty four, seven twelve twenty shipping. But is it complete though? 
Um, doesn't have the box, which is really for me, but right. really nice condition. Is that like something for a hot dog? I see a hot dog looking shape. I guess maybe they made hot dogs back then. Not really sure. French fries for this, right? I would think so, yeah. Unless you make this and then cut it up and it's pickles. Right, right. It looks so yeah, semi complete. Looks really nice. <laughs> semi complete. Yeah, that's like buzzword for like it's not complete. Um. This thing is in every catalog since the 1950s, the rock tumblers, which is just makes a lot of noise. All right, let's get past the little kid stuff. Get to the big kid stuff. <laughs> like Barbie dolls. <clears throat> I think this guy with the boom box. Wait, wait. Uh, if you could yeah, go please up. Uh, go up. Is that... One Barbie, is that one Kendall holding like a gun? No, wait, here? Oh, no, no. Oh, I thought the, <laughs> the guy with the present in his hand wearing the, the silver suit, the, the picture went blurry for a second. So oh. I thought that the words next to him looked like a gun. That's funny. That'd be amazing. It's a Ken with his own nine millimeter hand. Well, he on. looks like a mafioso in that kind of an outfit with that hairstyle or something. He kind of does. He looks like, um, <laughs> I forget his name um, from um, Goodfellas. Um, right, right. Not Henry Hill. I forget the uh, Joe Pesci's character. Yeah. The Utes. But yeah, look at this guy with his boombox. Yeah, that's awesome. In the 1990s one, we found an MC Hammer Barbie, which I thought was really, really crazy. You know, I'm going to sound like the old codger, get off my lawn, and all the, the stereotypes, go ha go ahead and whatever. But, man, toys were better back in the day. Um, You know, I think toys are good now. I think that it depends on what you're looking at. Like, this stuff, I don't know anything about the dolls and stuff, but... Whoa, that was a creepy clown. <laughs> I just don't think, like, these are things that kids have an interest in. Look at the Laurel and Hardy. Oh, those are awesome. I, those are awesome. I would totally yeah, have those. They have a Howdy Doody. I would totally. I Mortimer Snurd. They have a Mortimer Snurd. Yeah, like, these are not. You wouldn't find these now, right? I want those so bad. Look at that. I they, want those so bad. They vary they from $15 to $26. kind of cool oh and they have a charlie mccarthy of course going along with mortimer snurd <laughs> love it that's yeah, pretty interesting but yeah we don't we don't get that you get apps now you, now you get gift cards to buy apps um come on people get some weird looking bert oh Wee Arman and cherry mm. This is something that was completely like a big deal. The Pee Wee Herman show. I don't know if that was on the air at that time. What Pee Wee's Playhouse? Yeah, Pee Wee's Playhouse. Was that around eighty eight? I think so. <laughs> I, I they had this in the other catalog that I went through, and I have one of these in the box. Like it's like an engine that you build. <laughs> I don't know where it came from. It's Actually, it might be my son's. He might have gotten it as a gift. It's like, what the hell am I going to do with this? <laughs> this huge box. I guess I'll re-gift it eventually. Telescopes yeah. that never really work. Um, <laughs> Horse. <laughs> this is funny. Horse. <laughs> Horse. That's all it does. You know, that reminds me. What is that? The Whoops, did I lose you? I might have lost you, Gino. All right, let's see if we can reconnect you really quickly. Having technical difficulties, people, but we're going to fix it. 
We gotta fix it like it's no tomorrow. I don't know what happened. Sorry. No, it's totally fine. <laughs> We're still on the air. Um, you know that was that toy up there, the one with uh, the kids spelling horse. Was that the <laughs> learn how to speak or something? Learn um, how to speak. Let's see. I'm gonna zoom in with my touchpad. Uh oh, uh -oh. my uh, my yeah, everything. Like Everything's that. freaking out. I'm gonna fix it. Okay. Jeez. Something happened. My apologies. No, I don't think it's you. For once. <laughs> there we go. It should be back. Yeah, it's 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 back. All right. It's fun, challenging, and a great way to learn. It's almost twice the child pleasing activities for um blah blah blah. What does it do? It's a verbal tutor. Oh, because I had a, a something like I think they used to call them speak and spells. Yeah, or speak and like spells. That. I love them. Yeah, I, I I had one, and the funny thing is, is the the way that the lady spoke when you pressed the letters was interesting. Right. Like me and my me and my sister would always laugh our our collective heads off because when you pressed the word S, she said it like ass, ass. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, and you're saying the speak and spell would do that? Yeah. All right, hold on. I'm going to see if I can find this. Um, I would. I remember it was yellow, and and the and the and the letters were blue. I think that's all I can remember. This says speak and spell talks crap to me. I'm just going to click it. We'll see what it says. This is my speak and spell, and I don't think it's very happy with me. Why? I think the guy's really uh, grasping for straws on that one. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can't find one where he's just pressing S. But it would be like S, right? Right. <laughs> but the way she said it was like ass. Oh ass. my God, he said S. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I can see you and your sister freaking out about it. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, the things that we'd find entertaining. Right. Especially as kids. Yeah, especially as kids. Look at this thing, typewrite. So you can learn new typing. I was telling you before I took typewriting, uh, you know. Oh, no, I didn't tell you that before. Um, when I was in high school, I took a typing class. Yeah, I, I, I've also taken typing classes. Oh. And, and I still, you know, I don't type to, I, I can't type the way that normal people type, but I do type pretty quick. And, normal people, it's just, I, you yeah. type. Here we yeah. go, speak and spell. Yep, yep. How much was the speak and spell? 44 bucks? My wow. goodness. That's a lot of money. I, I thought this thing would be 10 bucks. The hell's in that thing? Um, we got some ALF books, got some comic books here. Judy Bloom, some books. Books, who wants books? Let's get to the games, people. Legos. Is that an erector set? Well, it's a family show, dude. Um, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is an erector set. Nice. I used to have one. Those are fun. I don't think I, I had the Lincoln Logs. I don't remember having an erector set. Um, I had Lincoln Logs, too. Those are fun. Yeah. I was actually uh, 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 in my... When I went to church yesterday, I saw... Um, some uh, Lincoln Logs up in the nursery, and I just got overly nostalgic for them. Yeah, you know, like they have that green painted wood or stained wood. And you just, yeah, know, it's kind of cool. Like it really brings you right back, the way they feel, and uh, it's, yeah, it's... Duplos, Legos. Yeah. Oh my goodness, man! Let's get. To I mean, the... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Legos have become so big now, though. You know, they have Lego stores and everything else. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, just they were basically something that you did and you put something together. They weren't necessarily like, you know, this big thing for collectors or anything. Yeah, I don't remember right, them being right. like that. The collectors. Yeah. The, the collecting really 
started in the nineties, I think, or, I mean, it, it's always been a thing, but it became right. really mainstream. Um, some cool I'm a sucker for right. instruments. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, this stuff kind of looks cool. This guitar, which I don't know if that's a real guitar though. You can't really tell. It's probably not. Hit sticks. I kind of remember. cool you know these little keyboards are kind of cute <clears throat> the stuff like this here we go there's some i i love these old things but usually it's casio that makes the best you know retro ones these kind of fall apart yeah ah oh, there we go this thing you know this thing oh is that the pxl 2000 yeah. oh those that was cool that was like the that was the uh the Fisher Price camcorder that recorded video on audio cassettes. Yeah, look, and I'm Al. I guess they had a, a TV that came with it as well. Huh. Yeah, if you want to see a great video, we mentioned out of the archive uh, earlier in the program. If you want to see a great video on the PXL 2000, uh, our friend Ben Minot did a wonderful video on the PXL 2000. So go look that up, people. You know, I wanted one of these. So I, I really, yeah. I wish I bought one. I mean, of course, because they're worth a fortune now, but I mean, <laughs> right. It's yeah. I mean, they shoot like terrible quality, right? I mean, I think that's the, oh, yeah. one. but the, the idea of shooting video on an audio tape is I love the idea. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is cool. Like, I don't know how they devise that. Oh, look at that boom box. Yeah. This is a cute little thing, but I, I hope we're going to get into like some more interesting boom boxes you know like this stuff is cute but where's the real walkman these are fun and stuff i never really you know air hockey knock um rock'em sock'em now this is where you would normally find like a wwf like or well, maybe later with action figures yeah like jack specific and stuff like that I don't think Jack Specific was even a business at this point. Right, yeah. Board games. Board is right. Um, <laughs> you better be quick or your opponent will punch your lights out. Can't even say that now. Upset everyone. These are kind of interesting. These oh, the, games. Yeah, from Tiger Electronics. Are they Tiger? Are they? No, I know that they are now. I'm just wondering who made them back then. I, mean, I bet you maybe it was doesn't say. I want to say it's Bandai. Mm, the quality's not good enough to be able to see a logo. It's weird that they're not mentioning the company, right? Hmm. <laughs> It's kind of funny. This person's just like, TV play along Wheel of Fortune game. Why does he have to be so close to the TV? Oh, I think Ben did a video on that one as oh, well. Really? I think. Yeah, I think he did. And I think like the, the laser to device parameter was quite poor or something or oh. didn't work. I swear Ben did a video on that. I'd, I'd have to look back, but I do think he did a people go and look up out of the archive wheel of fortune. And I think you might see <laughs> that he did a video with, if not this device, at least a form of wheel of fortune gaming. I, I love, uh, you know, it's just to bring up out of the archive again. I love his intro song and everything and the way it's edited. It's a lot of fun. The oh dear, yeah. Near, near, near. Near, 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 near. All right, what else we got here? Oh, here we go. Which Atari is this? All right, so this is the Atari XE one. I don't think I have this unit. I have the 400 or something. I don't know which one this. So 88, I mean, the Nintendo is already out. You know, NES is already out. So I'm not really sure. Are they really trying to go head on with that? 7,800 Atari. Yeah, I mean, Atari at this point, w weren't they considered like passe? Yeah, I think they'd, yeah, they'd redone the 2,600. It was only 50 bucks. Nobody wanted that. Mario Brothers 2,600. Look at the games. I mean, $18 for a game for the Atari. It's very. Yeah. Um, 
<clears throat> I had this. Um, I didn't have the Sega scope though. This 3D glasses thing. Although, um, I don't know. I don't know if, yeah, I definitely didn't have it, but maybe I played it. The thing that was good about the Sega master system. Is that what this is? Um, is there was a game built into it. Like, so you just kind of turn around and get this little puzzle game. Kind of a little Easter egg. But look at the price of these games. $50 for Afterburner. I mean, it's not so far off as to how much they are now. Right. I have right. one of these. One of the, um, my original <laughs> NES Advantage. Of course, Nintendo owned the world at this point. Oh, know, yeah. In 88, it was a Nintendo that you wanted. Actually, and the Sega system was doing very well. So I'll say that. So what was your favorite uh, game on the NES? Zelda, Legend of Zelda. Same here. Yeah. Same here. I love it. It blew me away, that game. My my kid was just asking me that the other day. Couldn't find where you're, couldn't tell where you're going or find where you were supposed to go. But, you know, it was a fun game where you could just explore and fight monsters and whatever. But looking at this list, I'll say Contra was a great game. Yeah. Um, Excite Bike I used to love. <clears throat> um, Karate Kid or Kung Fu. I, I think it was Kung Fu that I liked the most. Mike Tyson's Punch Out was fun. I didn't get too far with it, though. Yeah, a lot of people had difficulty with that one. Here's tag team wrestling with no other, no, you know, company. Sorry, not available. Well, why are you showing it then? That's Zelda. Isn't that weird? That's strange. <laughs> Sorry, not available. It's messed up. Yeah, they even have Link right here. Right. Sorry. Look at anywhere, like, <laughs> go elsewhere. Oh, wait, here's Legend of Zelda. I don't know what they're trying to do here. Look at this. This is like multiple pages of Nintendo games. Another sorry not available. Yeah, what is that? Could always do like a re reverse image search with that. Yeah, I'm not really sure what it is. Some type of... Um, this stuff's kind of cute, I guess. G.I. Joe. Nothing wrong with that. I was into G.I. Joe. At this point, I was not, though. I was already... Ghostbusters in a Volkswagen Beetle? That doesn't make any sense. Um, maybe in the cartoon they drove in a Beetle? You know, what do you think about, you know, the two uh, versions of Ghostbusters? There was <laughs> the real Ghostbusters, which, of course, is based off the film Ghostbusters with Dan Aykroyd and crew. But then there was also Filmation's Ghostbusters, which was based off of the original Ghostbusters, which had Larry Storch in it. And uh, I I don't know. I like the Filmation Ghostbusters. I, I think yeah. it's quite charming, and I, and I like the theme song. I never Filmation, watched it, so I don't know. Yeah. Filmation had a good... They had great theme songs back then. Even if the show itself is mediocre, they had great theme songs. And, you know, I don't know if you'd be interested in doing this, but... For I don't know if mixtape rewind is still a thing, but we should. I would love to do like '80s cartoon theme songs or '80s theme songs in general that we just love. Um. Well, yeah, mixtape has gotten its own good collection of cease and desist <laughs> letters. So oh, I see. yeah, I mean, it doesn't mean it's gone. Cause I, I yeah, I'm just kind of laughing at it because there's nothing they can really do. But you know, um, there's so many projects in front of me that. So it's hard for me to invest time, but if you wanted to put something together, I would totally release it. You know? Yeah, of course. Remote controlled stuff, remote control boats. I never got into remote controlled stuff. You? I I did a little bit, not much though, but I, I, I did like the idea of having a remote controlled car. I don't even know if they do remote controlled stuff anymore like they that. They do. They do. Oh, they do. Because the, uh, they're, now they're electric, of course. So. Oh, yeah. Um, they get 40, 50 miles per hour. You break somebody's like ankle with these things. I guess even, I guess Elon even took over the remote controlled car business. You know, that'd be kind of crazy if Tesla released remote control cars. Oh my gosh. Yes. Um, but you can't crash them into anything because they go up in flames. Yeah. Um, look Tesla's, at that Godzilla. Oh, look at 
this. This is the car I wanted in 1988. Trans Am. I want to see. Oh, no, it's a Firebird. Close. People are like, no, Mark, that's not a Trans Am. It's a Firebird. Coca-Cola truck. Now Hess, you know, Hess trucks just don't exist, right? I mean, they right. they do exist, but you have to like kind of seek them out. Like I think that's all they do. I don't think Hess is a store anymore. Micro machines were a big deal at some point. Oh yeah, what was his name? The guy who speaks really, really fast. Yeah, the micro machines guy. What was his name? He, he's 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 an Italian, I think, like me. Oh, he was on Saved by the Bell. Micro machine guy. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah you look, guy. Yeah. Um, John Machida. John Machida, yes. Oh, uh, he was everywhere back in the day, man, and and he was great. He would talk he, he really, was also, really fast. Yeah, and he was also in a f- r- rather popular FedEx ad too. I, you know, what was weird about that is, um, I I don't know why he spoke so fast because <laughs> it's micro machines, you know. Right, but it worked to help sell yeah. the toys. What about um these things like racetracks? See, I was more of a Hot Wheels guy, and you know, I mm-hmm. I, I love the hot the the orange plasticky tracks sure. that yeah, yeah, yeah. Were, were difficult. But I I love Hot Wheels tracks and and everything else. I I I could play with those for hours, man. I got one of these one year, and it's like yeah. you set it up once, and then realistically, what are you supposed to do? Like right, you're and, to, you know, who has the room for like this? correct? <laughs> like this is kind of cool. Trains. Oh, I love trains. I, I, love, I love trains. I just never got into them. I could see as an adult getting into them. I have saw my old train set somewhere in my bedroom. Is it um, an electric one? Like what? What type of thing? Yeah, it, it's 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 an it's like a remote controlled type deal. Right. And uh, you know, I, I don't think it was a Lionel because I don't think my parents could uh, uh, afford a Lionel track. But it, but it was a neat little set, and I always enjoyed getting a train set every year for Christmas. It was it was a nice little tradition That's that we awesome. had going there for a while. Yeah. Look at this thing! Like, who is the room? <laughs> like, <what> exactly, is... <laughs> exactly. That's like a Gomez Adams type uh, right, train. Right, right. <laughs> That's so funny. That's exactly what that is. It's about the only person who would have the space as well. Yeah, and then he blows them up. <laughs> now this is actually incredible because i do a podcast called dr quinn medicine woman um well actually a podcast about dr quinn medicine woman and it happens yeah. to take place in colorado springs so i'm just gonna take a quick little screenshot of this and send it to my co-host kelly i think she'll get a little kick out of this so <laughs> it's just funny that it's colorado springs mm. Sports. Michael Jordan was everywhere in the 80s. Even now he's everywhere. As a kid, we didn't have these. <laughs> we just had anything you had to slide. Mm-hmm. What the hell? <laughs> Look at these. You have the you have a ninja back here, and then you have like the dinosaur. <laughs> like, what is yeah. That? The dinosaur costume with the ninja. It's so weird. They mix in the toys in a weird way. You know, it's like all of a sudden little kid stuff. It's like toddler junk. Yeah. These were a big deal when I was a kid. Like these scooters. Yeah. Well, like I see like Stephanie Tanner's uh, bike. <laughs> number 13. Like that's something I would see Stephanie Tanner writing on Full House. I'm waiting for it to say like Stephanie. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't be too surprised if it was like you know this is her bike. You know, like licensed. Do you Gino you know? <laughs> on your train? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think seriously. Huh? I don't think I ever had anything like that. Me either. I didn't. I mean, I. I mean, I'm sure somebody did, right? But this this is for rich kids. Come on, let's be real here. Oh, my screen just... Oh, again? See, I said yeah. rich kids, and they're like, how dare you? How dare you call me a trust fund loser? <laughs> Here we go. It's coming. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, it's cool. 
and it would come with this track, right? Like you're in Silver Spoons. Yeah. Did you ever see the TV show Silver Spoons? Uh, with Ricky Rick Schroeder. Ricky Rick. <laughs> Richie Rich. Yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't uh, have these either. So, uh, my my screen is still buffering, or something's going on with it. Oh, really? Could you just uh, give it a refresh, or maybe you already did? On okay, my I end, could, it's uh. I can refresh it. Oh yeah, now it's working. All right, the little thing I was showing you was the Corvette. My sister, I don't know if my sister had a Barbie car like that or not. It's cool. I don't know if she phone. did. Yeah, that is cool. She did have a Barbie car. Special appearance by my mother, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Mrs. Cuddy. Sleeping bags. <laughs> Look at this. Sleeping. Yeah. What's your mom's first name? Cheryl. Hello, Cheryl. Happy holidays. I hope that you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And Mar all that Mark said. Mark said happy holidays and hopefully you had a happy Thanksgiving. I got my hair, earphones and that's why you can't hear. Oh, okay. I'm trying to zoom here. Let's see if they have any licensed. Um, oh, yeah. All right. So we got Mickey. In the last catalog, they had an Ice Ice Baby um, sleeping bag for Vanilla Ice. So oh, I'd love, I'd love to have that Roger Rabbit one. Yeah, you know what? I mean, that's kind of cool. Right? No, I want the DuckTales one. Yeah, that's actually really interesting. I'm gonna, I'm uh, looking it up. You know, I'm looking it up. I have to see yeah. um, DuckTales uh, sleeping bag. I don't know. Did I ever have a sleeping bag? I don't think I did. Because we never went camping, of course. Well, it's never too late, Gina. Well, I don't have a dad or anything. I don't, you know. No. Oh, nice. Oh, it's only... Oh, well, it's a bid. 35 bucks. 35 bucks? Nice. That looks so cool. The Scrooge and Flintheart Glomgold and the Be Beagle Boys. Oh, my gosh. I want that. I don't know if I'd fit... I don't think I'd fit in it. I'd probably break it. Now, this is something you put on the wall. Like, this is... Really oh, cool. yeah. Definitely. Yeah, this is actually pretty... Oh, it's got a stain. Put it in my bachelor pad. It's got the, I don't know if that's a shadow or some kid took a dump. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful with those things. Yeah, at least wash them. But yeah, that's pretty cool. The Roger Rabbit one is kind of cool. There's, n there's no Roger Rabbit on um, online. Raggedy Ann. So you got My Little Pony, you got Creepy Clown, Pee Wee's Playhouse. I bet you the Pee Wee's Playhouse is uh, worth a lot. You got duffel bags too. The duffel okay. bag is one of those things that I would use on a daily basis. Um, yeah. Maybe the Pee Wee one. I don't know. I, oh. I like clowns. Oh, Lobo. What? Wait, it's not Sheriff Lobo. What's, the, what's Lobo? I don't know. I guess it was some sort of... Uh... Monster truck property that, that that's sadly gotten lost to time. But look, you mentioned you love Hot Wheels. Oh yeah, that that's awesome. Ghostbusters. You, you know what's weird? Hot Wheels and Matchbox, Epiphany people, same company. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Karate, <laughs> just karate. <laughs> Don't bully my kid in his sleepover. He's got a karate <laughs> sleep. So out of these eight, which one would you grab? Probably the... As a kid, though. As a kid. Not today. Uh, Probably the Garfield one. Yeah, I like that. As a kid, well, hmm, at this point, I wasn't so much of a kid. I was already in... This is 90... I mean, it's 88. So I'm like 15. I wouldn't really. All right, so I'm going to go from my my ten year old self. I would probably choose the Snoopy. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, or Super. I was a big Superman fan, so I would probably go Superman. Yeah, I can see that. Ghostbusters is weird how it doesn't take up the whole image. How much are these? Two, twenty bucks. Twenty slumber bags are twenty five, and if you buy two or more, it's twenty. And I think the duffel bags are 10. She got these tents, Gino. Holy moly. Garfield tent. 
Alf. Is that Air Bears? I never heard of Air Bears. I gotta say, the Mickey camo is kind of interesting. Yeah. Imagine a version of MASH with Disney characters. Oh, look at this. Oh, that's that, brilliant. But imagine this being like big enough for an adult to go in. How awesome oh, that yeah. would be. Yeah, I would totally rock that. I don't care. Which, like, honestly, Gino, which had, tent is yours? <laughs> honestly, if I had my own bachelor pad, I would totally rock the Garfield tent and have ducktails sleeping bags all over my wall. There you go. But think about it. It's like you camping. Everybody's got like their like, you know, things. Gino, which uh, which tent is yours? Uh, the Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> have like a little Roomba in there to keep it clean yeah um, yeah yeah these are pretty awesome G.I. Joe is pretty hardcore like normal yeah whoa got a little dog little dog dartboard were you a dart player when you were a kid no nah, not really no um this is weird we had one of these when I was a kid like one of these wood things and I remember mm -hmm. my brother, quote unquote, lent the dartboard to a friend and he never returned. And that was it. For the rest of my life, we'd never had another dartboard. Wow. Skates. And I, I used to love roller skates. I wonder if inline skating was a thing in 88. Oh, here we go. These. And um, by the way, yeah, I guess no inline skating. Um... So yeah, these are pretty big around, maybe around this period of time. Skateboards, I remember being in this shape. Bikes. These are all garbage. Look how high, all right, by the way, like, see how high that stem is? Yeah. <laughs> the thing's gonna bend. Ooh, look at these. That's actually kind of cool. Get some huffy uh, mags. It looks like a GT. The laid back seat. It's pretty cool. Bed sheets. You know, I went to like one of these like savers places and in the sheet section, they did have um, an 80s Lego top sheet that I bought. It was like two bucks. Nice. Stuff like that, I think, is kind of interesting, you know. Um, Santa costumes. Nativity scenes. That's very nice. How much is a nativity scene back then? I like nativity scenes. I think it's nice when, <clears throat> like, a church... Um, now, you, you belong to a church, right? A local church. Yeah, I'm a deacon at my church, yeah. Yeah, de deacon. Do the, so... Is your title officially like Deacon Gino or Deacon Cuddy or like what would be your proper way to address you as a deacon? Um, Gino. Just Deacon Gino. Okay. Yeah. So, um, did you, uh, do you set up a nativity scene at your church? Um, well, I just joined the church like this year. So, I, uh, but we are plan So I don't know what their, the protocol for, for deacons and setting that up goes, but um, we are going to have a nativity scene this year, but That's it's going, awesome. you know, it's going to be a more diverse, quote unquote, uh, nativity scene. Uh, we we're going to retire the uh, the more traditional one, much to the chagrin of both myself and uh, a fellow deacon. But yeah, it happens. Um, no baby. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Why can't Jesus be a full grown forty year old? <laughs> <laughs> like mirth from mark and mindy um so he ages in reverse <laughs> um no but it sounds like it's still going to be an interesting thing my son even though we're jewish we participate in community service and everything and the local church needed a hand setting up their nativity scene and him and a number of his fellow boy scouts went and helped them decorate and set up all of their stuff which is pretty he said he had a good time, and they filled them up with cookies and eggnog. Um, trees. Do you put up a tree? Um, I'd like to. I just have to make room for it. Mm -hmm. That's really the goal, right? I mean, well, it's really the challenge, I mean, 
is yeah. to find a spot for this monstrosity. Um, I I love the idea of a real tree in the house, but I don't know how people do it. it seems like a big mess. But yeah, and all the thistles and everything that falls on the floor that you have to clean up afterwards, yeah. and especially if you have a cat. Oh my god! Do you have a cat? Yeah, I do. So the cat's gonna be like climbing up into it. You've seen Christmas Vacation. Yeah. You see what they do. So there's a lot of um, a lot of uh, interesting stuff. We're blasting through. We found what your mom wants for Christmas right here, the powerful <laughs> turbo spa. Uh, I think we can all use a little Daisy, right? Yeah, a little dollop of Daisy. A little dollop of Daisy. Um, let's see. We got this one. Look at this. How cool is that tub, by the way? I mean. It's like a transparent tub. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Um, so it's kind of, let's let that load a little. But yeah, it looks like we're winding down. I mean, what else is left to go in here? I haven't seen the stereos. Like, that's one thing that I'm kind of concerned about here. I'm not seeing stereo systems. Bobble lamp. Refrigerators, microwaves. Um, microwaves are like kind of um, pretty much a staple in the kitchen by this time. Now we're getting, every, oh, look, check out those bean bags. Oh, check out these beds. I never had one of these, but this look at this spaceship one. Oh yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. I right? I wish I could have had something like that back look in the at day. Me too, but I mean that's kind of expensive. Six hundred dollars. Wow. I want one now. That's oops, I lose my mouse. My touchpad just died on me. Stupid apple. It won't shrink. All right, we're going to do our best on this. <laughs> Unbelievable. I think my batteries just died on my touchpad. All right. Oh, there it goes. Sort of for a second, then died. All right. It's better than nothing. Um... Swivel rocker chairs. There has to be stereos in here somewhere. I don't know anything about sports. I apologize if I'm passing anything like that kind of interests you with that. I just don't know. Whoa. What's all this? <laughs> I would totally own one of those guns, man. Oh, it's, it's a like replica. Album. These are replicas. My kid yeah. is really into replicas right now. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> like late 19th century um, replicas. And for Hanukkah, one of the things I'm getting them is, um, I forget what it is. It's the gun that the hand Solo pistol is modeled after. But it's an exact replica. This thing is crazy. It's not cheap either. These are BB guns. Did you have a BB gun as a kid? No, my mom didn't let us have anything like that. Mine either, but I had one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I tried to be a good boy, Mark. <laughs> good luck with that, Gino. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, so let's see. We got billiards again. Enough. Enough of this. Let's get to the stereo. There must be stereo. If there's no stereos, I'm going to put my hand through the screen. Ah, here we go. Hot components for your car. A CD player. For $239? I don't know if that's a lot. That's probably a lot. It would also probably skip like crazy. Oh, yeah. With the shock. Probably no shock absorbers in that thing. <clears throat> so at a, at a garage sale recently, <clears throat> I purchased one of these older ones, like Scanner, for yep. CBs and stuff. Uh, $5. And I also picked up um, a CB 
receiver and trans like um like a whole unit with the microphone and everything for three dollars in the box never opened nice yeah so i picked a, i was very lucky to pick those up do they still work i didn't open the other one yet but i'm gonna guess that it probably um probably works right trying to get my touchpad to recognize these phones take me back. Oh, that AT&T answering machine up there? I think we had that this? exact one at home. Yeah. Boop. You have eight messages. Boop. Is that the one that's like, you could put like a little mini cassette in there and it does it? Because I think we had one like that. Let's as a... see. I'm reading. It doesn't say, but yeah, I bet you that this thing right here flips up. Yeah. Because yeah. I know we had a cassette operator one, and I wish I still had the tape because my the tape had my dad's voice on it. Oh. You lost the tape? Yeah, somewhere along the way, I think. You never know, man. Little things like that pop up. Oh, here we go. They're best selling Commodore 64. I have one of these printers downstairs. I don't know if it works. $150 just for the printer. Jeez. Yeah. Floppy holders. This thing's probably worth a fortune right now. Is that a Commodore? I'm not really sure what that is. Apple IIe's. I have one of these as well. Well, no, I have the Apple IIe version. This is not Apple. It's like laser. Like, what is that? That's kind of strange. Like some type of um, clone, maybe? I, I'm not really sure. You know who know is Ben Minot. <laughs> cool cameras. Cameras were a tremendously big thing. There's this new device that's kind of popping up. And it is basically a digital roll of film with, um, it's like a device that you literally put into your old camera and it works just the way it turns your, your like analog camera into a digital camera. So you take a picture and it has a sensor. So it actually uses the lens to take the photo. Do you think it would work in like a Polaroid instant? Because Not instant, I... no. Just, oh, okay. That's just a whole different technology. But for a 35 millimeter camera, that's really what it's built for. Because I still have my dad's old Polaroid camera in my room, and I'd love to be able to take pictures with that thing. Yeah, I don't think, um, although there is a company that makes Polaroid film. Oh, really? Yeah. How expensive is it, though? I'm sure there's a premium, but I don't think it's unobtainable. Yeah. Oh, everything is freaking out. Oh, wait a minute. All right. Now we've gotten to, I, I almost skipped through probably the coolest thing here. So nice. we, have, we have the Yamahas, which are great. This, I'm not going to lie. This is what it looks like that the guy gave me for free. But I can't say for sure because they, they all kind of have a similar look. Right, right. Um, I'd love oh, to get a, look at that yeah, thing. I'd love to get something like that that has like, old 80s like synth on it i'd love to get that this is almost like a keytar thing oh i'd love to have a guitar um there's a music video uh trans x is living on video and the singer pascal langadon is seen with a beautiful looking guitar that i just love to own you know um probably the coolest person i've ever seen play a guitar was prince <laughs> and he had like a big beautiful one like there was like gold <laughs> Because, you know, oh, it's Prince. Man. It's Prince. Come yeah. on. If you're going to do it, you're going to do it right. Um, this thing. Have you ever seen this guitar thing? No. All right. I really want to get one of these. And even when I was a kid, I kind of wanted one. It's basically a digital guitar. Uh, it has plastic strings. It's a piece, I mean, it's a toy for the most part. But I yeah. remember it just being one of these, like, really cool things. And I want to look it up right now. I'm just kind of really curious... Oh, it's the PSR. Oh, no. Well, no, it's a DG10. 
Yeah, these are going for a lot of money. I'm going to bring it over here. I mean, yeah, right? But it's kind of, it's like a synthesizer guitar. But it's, I mean, I don't know. I don't know why I want one so bad, but. Not really sure what made it work or not work, but it was not popular. I remember when they were on discount because nobody was buying them, you know. Um, you can buy guitar pedals there. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. All right, so here we get into like the the nitty gritty of the electric guitar. Holy cow. Some of these look pretty cool. They're probably all kind of junk. Yeah, yeah. Probably like Chinese made junk. But, you know, you get some nice inlays. You feel good about yourself. If you get better, you get something better. You get the squeeze box, drums. I had a DD5. I had one of these. So cute. Like these little drum machine things. Um, I like this idea. This is the kind of thing Marty McFly would have had. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful looking. Oh, here we go. Yeah, this is this is where the good stuff is. The under little portable shortwave radio, little Walkman. Yeah. Still, like, it's still kind of generic stuff. Like, Magnavox, at least. But where's, like, all right, so finally, Sony. Legitimate I think Sony I... Walkman. I think I had that sports one, that yellow one right there. I right think I might have had something like that back in the day, yeah. I bet you it would still work. These things were made like tanks. Sometimes they needed a new belt. To right, play. right. Do you ever have these? <laughs> these headphone things? Oh, man. Um, oh, look at that thing. Oh, man. That's, for $100, I would take this over a Walkman. Yes. Yes. That's pretty cool. That that's really, really cool. Dual decker, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I had I had like a dual decker like this. Right. But I always wanted like a big one with like detachable speakers. Exactly. Those are beautiful. <laughs> I'm salivating right now. Uh -uh. So I I used to be in the boombox game. I, I got out of it for for couple of reasons one because i really don't have the room for them anymore and also because they're really a pain in the neck to repair and i'm not a guy who knows how to repair things i didn't inherit that gene from my father unfortunately well these things are so compact they, they right. squeeze so, like look at this thing you have a cd player cassette sometimes you have the two cassettes you have a radio thing in there and sometimes the speakers are detachable which probably actually makes things a little bit easier Wow. Three hundred dollars for a Sony disc man. Cheeseburger AM radio. Yeah, I'll take one. Sure. Here we go. The um never priced lower. Now these They're are just non branded, it looks like. Probably like some Chinese built mechanisms in like there. Like sound design or something like that. Right. Yeah, see, there you go. Oh, the sound design, yeah. I kind of, all right, so I'm a sucker for the way this stuff looks. Yeah, and the wood grain. Yeah, and it's weird. You can go in, these are tiny too. Because Look at the size of the cassettes and then give yourself an idea of how big this whole thing is. It's very tiny. But they give you, you know, they make it look like it's huge. And you could go into like a Goodwill right now and find stuff like this, but they're asking $200 and it's not worth it. Right. And you don't even know if it works. Even if it works though, it's just the quality of it is not going to, this is worth $25 now, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, there's a coolness factor, which is what I'm willing to pay for. What is this? That's five. Oh, all right. Pioneer. I guess. A lot of buttons. I guess a lot of buttons equals a lot of money. 
I mean, this is. I'm just, yeah. I'm just wondering if there's like any VCRs or laser displayers in here. I bet you there's going to be VCRs uh, without a doubt. Look at this thing. Looks like Bang and Olufsen. That's really nice. I mean, the way it's flat. Contour 25. Look at this thing. A thousand bucks, 30 watts per channel. Oh, Marantz. Stuff looks crazy. Now this, this is what, <clears throat> given the choice, probably, this is probably your best choice. You got the five disc changer, Sony, although Pioneer, $200 less, you still get a Pioneer. Oh, here we go. Right. We're getting into the section that I love. Isn't this worth like $7,000? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's awesome to see this stuff back when they were still new and being sold and the prices, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. it's like twenty four ninety five. Uh, I have to go up. You know, I don't want to, you know, blast the. I, I have the Cinderella. I have the Mickey's Christmas Carol. I have the Sword and the Stone, Dumbo, Alice, and I believe I also have the Mary Poppins in this sale. Is this worth? Like, when you see these for sale somewhere, are these worth picking up from a collector's point of view? Well, if you collect Walt Disney home videotapes, certainly they are because there are, like, minor variations, you know, and right. minor differences that, that we pick up on as Disney video collectors. But, you know, to the grand collector who's looking to make a buck off of this stuff, no. Okay. I mean, I collect it for the nostalgia and everything, and that's how I watch this stuff. Well, that tape go ahead no i was gonna say i like the idea like so when there's missing footage right yeah that's important it's important right. to preserve you know you, you're the person who certainly knows this it's important to preserve it because you don't know when you're going to lose that you don't know like all right you know what i'm going to rely on the blu-ray all right well the blu-ray came out doesn't have that little 20 second you know little snippet right and it's gone forever because she threw out the videotape that Gulliver's Travels tape, I have that. Oh, this that's one? The, yeah, that's the Max Fleischer version. Uh, in, that happens to be my favorite film of all time. Oh. I love that movie. This is like when videotapes were also kind of like they were trying different things, you know. Um, cycle vision. Go on a bike ride. Oh, here's Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Or Pee Wee's Playhouse, yeah. Pee Wee's Playhouse, I always call it that. Dirty Dancing, when it was taking the world by storm. Babar, yeah, these videotapes were a big deal. This is around the time I worked at Blockbuster Video. Now, I was talking with a buddy of mine, and, uh, you know, he, you know, thinks that Blockbuster died the death that it deserved because of the fact that it drove out of business a lot of the mom and pop shops mm -hmm. that, you know, really supported the neighborhoods and the smaller time, you know, citizens of the uh, cities and towns, uh -huh. um, you know, and uh, he thinks that, you know, Blockbuster and stores like that monopolized uh, that industry. And when Netflix came along and killed Blockbuster, he thought that that was karma for what it did to, you know, the mom and pop shops. Mm. Um, I would argue... Um, how old is this person? Probably around your age. Okay, or... so he was there for it. Yeah. Um, in some ways he's right, and in some ways he's wrong, in my opinion. It's, um, there was, as far as I can remember, there were always, like, local family video stores. The thing that drove the popularity of videotapes getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper ruined the mom and pop shops. The mom and pop shops used to charge you for memberships. Um, they would charge you for uh, things like not rewinding. Uh, mm -hmm. They would charge you whenever they could charge you. Blockbuster Video came and they had a flat fee, which was still more. It, was, it would end up costing more sometimes to rent a movie at Blockbuster. But, you know, it, you knew it was going to likely be in stock because they have the copies. And they sold everything that you wanted to. You can go to Blockbuster Video. 
You can get your candy. You can get your the movie you want that's actually there. There's more than just one or two copies. And and that's it. They did a better job at it. And I'm sorry to tell like people mom and shop mom and pop shops that sometimes mom and pop shops don't do it better and they don't you know, sometimes they don't deserve to continue being in business because they didn't do as good of a job. Now, if you want some people compare it to Home Depot, right? The the pushing out the hardware stores and everything. And then that's that's different because I don't like um, what they ended up doing, but I think it's also very different um, because for just a variety of reasons, you know, mom and pop shops are usually for information. I, I just don't remember ever going to a mom and pop video store and getting anything, any real good information. I know other people that have had different experiences where they learned all about film from the guy who worked at the video store. I don't know. I thought Blockbuster Video did a good job at what they did. Um, mm. But you know what? Those mom and pop places stayed open for porn. <laughs> you know, like there's no porn at Blockbuster Video. No. Let's take a look at those kids' classics tapes from Good Times. Those oh, yeah, awesome. Good Times. Oh, and I have that tape, Groucho and the Marx Brothers. Which one? It, it, it's uh, that one. It's uh, the one next. That oh, one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't zoom in for some reason. My machine is being a jerk. Sorry. No, I'm, try, no. I'm trying everything I can, but I can't. <clears throat> Skateboard super stunts, nitro funny cars. No scimitar, man! Look at look all at this. Plans. This is like pages and pages of videotapes. BMX. Oh, Re <laughs> awesome. Republic Pictures home video. Oh my gosh, I love that down there. And all the workout. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's. Bodies. I love that logo. Love Happy with the Marx Brothers, their last film together. Really. You know, um, part of the reason why I call VHS Rewind and VHS Rewind is because. Um, Originally, my idea was to talk about all the movies that I experienced on VHS, such as, you know, it was mostly like Marx Brothers. Because I wouldn't have been able to see these movies if they weren't released on like some really, really questionable companies such as Good Times. Right, exactly. And exactly. I would buy these box sets at Suncoast Video, I think I want to call it. And I would get these box sets of like Chaplin, you know, it'd be like 10 videotapes, you know. And I would just blast through it, love it, you know. And it would that I uploaded a couple of those tapes. Oh, really? I yeah, I uploaded a couple of those uh, Chaplin ten VHS sets. Oh, and pause this for a minute. Yeah. Uh, I, I uploaded two of those Chaplin box sets from from I believe they're Madisey uh, Entertainment. I, I uploaded both sets on uh, another YouTube channel that I have called Gino Cuddy's Public Domain VHS Archive. And uh, I have a whole lot of tapes that I uploaded there um, that I transferred from my collection. So, yeah, stuff like that is on there. And I plan on uploading some more when I get the time to transfer and stuff. But, yeah, I mean, people have to remember. I'm it was it up easy... right now. Yeah. Yeah. I also uploaded the really bizarre. Yeah. This is what everyone should do right now. Subscribe. <laughs> I also uploaded the really bizarre Fleischer, Fabulous Fleischer folios. Dude, it uh, was which, exactly this. The Madisey. Holy cow. This yep. exact black one. I don't know if I had the second. Now, do you do you put these up just as is? Do you host them? Like, what do you do? No, I just present them as is and uh, have to fight cop bogus copyright claims because most of the content on here is public domain. I mean, with the Chaplin stuff, it was a matter of music and some matter of the films that people claimed that they had copyrights on, even though this was all public domain material. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, it's a labor of love, you know, yeah. really like it's like the Geno's house of rare films channel. It's a labor of love. Yeah. I'm glad you're doing it, man. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who are glad you're doing it. Video treasures is another one. Yeah. That King Kong tape that I, I used to rent that from the library. I could see the video treasures logo in my head that, that 
animation. <laughs> right. You know what I'm talking about? And and again, another copy of Gulliver's Travels that I own up there. This also brings me back to a time when you would have video treasures having a part of yeah. uh, New Age video. You have yeah, cartoon New Age classics. Vi- yeah, yeah, I have a lot of those cartoon classics. I have the Popeye one. I have some of those. And New Age video is interesting because New Age video eventually morphed into Alpha video, which is still in business today. Oh. Um, yeah, New Age video was basically a fly-by-night, another public domain video company that distributed like public domain films and cartoons on videotape. There were so many of those back in the day. And uh, I, I uh, have a sh- strong affinity for for that era of home video where public domain stuff was basically, I would, I don't want to say polluting, but I proliferate, proliferated throughout the market, you know, and, and then you have the parents approved stuff right there with that Bugs Bunny tape with that's not that yes. well drawn. Yeah. That's really and, bad. Right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, another guy, and I have to give a tip of the hat to this guy, who really has a strong affinity for the public domain VHS era is a fellow by the name of David Scott. And uh, he runs a a, a Tumblr blog called uh, The VCR from Heck, which is a really great blog dedicated to this material. And he really goes in depth on a lot of the tapes and the artwork and, and even the backgrounds of some of the companies involved and just a really, really sensational blog, and I highly recommend people checking his stuff out and going through the archives. It's vcrfromheck.tumblr.com. Correct. And, uh, you know, like, I miss the era where you can go to a store and pick up a six-hour tape of nothing but cartoons, you know? I remember I mean, that, the old days. Yeah, and it was a phenomenal era. I, I collect a lot of those 50 cartoon tapes, and I upload a lot of them to, uh, to uh, YouTube. That's where uh, I saw well, it. Well, not YouTube, but to archive.org because, uh, yeah. I love, yeah. um, I love the, um, archive as well, but here's out of the archives 270. This is where I saw it pop up too. the uh, chapel yeah. collection. I'm going to watch yeah. that, man. Um, one yeah. of the things that a lot of people, I don't know if this was just a tri-state area thing. This is certainly before your time, you know, but <clears throat> on new year's Eve, they would have a marathon of Chaplin movies, um, mm-hmm. on new year's Eve. And I don't know. It's just gone. You know, it's uh, maybe it's been replaced by something else like Twilight Zone or something like that, which is fine. Everybody has to have their own thing. But um, I remember I remember I used to tape it, you know, because I would always I think I, I think there's 80. You, you might know how many Chaplin films there are, maybe 86 or 87. And I, I think there was two of them I didn't have. And I think eventually I got them, but it was like, at that time you would just tape, you know, like, what do you have? What do you have? I want to try to get this, you know, and you can't find it. Right. Right. And, um, you would just do anything you can to get this stuff. Um, containers, these things, I, what do you think of these? Do you think there's any value in picking up these holders? I think there there is, especially if you don't have a lot of room. I would love to have like a wall stacked up of like those types <laughs> yeah. of uh, yeah, I would of, love of those it containers to to put my video cassettes in because it would just you know save a lot of space and I could just pull out a drawer and you know what would be cool is if I could label them by genre or star or whatever and and you know really like organize them like that. I have a you couple know? of them. I pick them up from yeah. time to time because they're really not, they don't cost very much whenever I see them. Right. And, right. but I have a few and I'm, I, I look at them and I'm like, well, do they really hold any value? I'm just not really sure. Some one of those, cause they do take up space. Um, and I've really whittled down my VHS collection, um, mm-hmm. considerably. Well, if, if, if you've, you know, substantially, you know, sh- shrunk in your collection, then I wouldn't recommend, you know, buying them at this time. But yeah, if you have a large collection like I do, you know, they would probably really come in handy for collectors and such. By the way, here's a VHS, uh, a videotape machine. Beautiful. Uh, this is, all right. So back, going back to the time, it's a stereo VCR. Big deal, mm-hmm. right? That you right. can record and play in stereo. <clears throat> um, you have Dolby noise reduction, $629. You can probably pick this up for about $15 now. Um, Beautiful machine though. Yeah. I mean, look at this though. $1,700 for the camcorder. Uh-huh. 
it's amazing how the prices have um, changed. Nine hundred for this one. Wow. Yeah, I mean it's. So are these all? Wait, three and four is super VHS. I can't zoom, can I? No. Um. Yeah, so this is actually super VHS. So you're getting a few extra lines of resolution. You still there, Gina? Yeah, I'm still oh, Okay, I'm sorry, you got quiet. I'm like, you know, you dozed off um, with me talking about this stuff. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like the people who are watching this video. I'm just kidding. Um, so is this even a branded VCR? I don't see a brand. Probably just go, Sears branded, I, I would imagine, because I know Sears put out their own electronics. Well, or at least, you know, hire, got some parts from China, put together an electronic and then just slapped their name on yeah. it. And, yeah. Here's just the player, the players. So at Blockbuster Video, we used to rent players. Hmm. And I think it was even Gold Star, if I'm not mistaken. So what was really cool about this is that if you have the, if you have a proper, um, play recorder. I don't know if it was the recorder. These didn't, these per, felis, facilitated a way so that you could copy a videotape. They would bypass like the macro vision. Yeah, and all there that? was something with the gold star where you could rent it from Blockbuster Video and you could actually make a copy unofficially. But mm -hmm. I always thought macro vision had, was built into the recorder. But I'm not 100% sure about that. But I remember people claiming, I, I never did this um, with this machine, but people claim that you could use the Gold Star rental from Blockbuster Video to make copies. I could be wrong. Okay, now we're getting to the brand of stuff like Panasonic. Yeah, Panasonic. So $300 is like, what is that, your average? It does not say stereo. So we're talking, you know, a mono VCR. Interesting. Nice portable TVs down there. Oh yeah, check that out. I bought one of these over the um, pandemic. I always wanted one. I picked up for like twenty bucks on eBay. Can't imagine you could pick anything up on them, can you? Or? No, no, it's just static. But you could. I mean, if you really wanted to run a wire, you can run it to like an, an Atari or Nintendo. These old TVs, kind of cool. And the black and white ones, $58 for the black and white. You get big screen. <laughs> you know, it seems reasonable price-wise, don't you think? I mean, 339 for stereo TV, it doesn't seem super expensive. No, no, it doesn't really. I remember TVs being a lot more. But of course, you know, when you venture into like Sony or big brand names, I like how they have the speakers here. That'd be cool if it was really there. Like you could see the speakers. I don't think you can. Probably just grills. This stuff, I love this stuff. What do you think of this? Oh, with the wood grain? Absolutely. But you know, these, yeah, these should open part. in my opinion, but they don't. Oh, I, yeah, definitely. Oh, the swivel. Come on, the swivel. You live in life. 26 inch TV. Size of that remote. Yeah, I love this stuff. We had a TV like, but like that one up there with the, with the speakers and the panel. This? Uh, this? no, uh, no, uh, the one below it. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. This? Yeah, I think so. I think we had one like that from Zenith that we got from uh, a neighbor of mine. Wow. They never die. I mean, they did, but I mean, they almost never died. This thing's pretty cool. Our big screen TVs give give a picture as sharp and as bright as our 19 TVs. We guarantee it. 
So you had 31 inch TV. Nobody had a 31 inch TV back in 89. No. That was, you know, pretty big TV. Heavy though. Look at that remote. It looks like a keyboard. Holy cow. It's but like, you know, this was a more simplistic era where, you know, Wow, two thousand dollars, and I missed that era, you know, because back then, what you if you had like a VCR and a TV, you know, you only needed like what a maximum of of what two remotes. Now you have like about five or six different remotes for all these different <laughs> technologies that are. It's really really unnecessary, and I've you know, scaled down though, man. I use one remote. Yeah, yeah. I really have scaled back on everything. I'm too old to deal with this stuff. 46 inches. What? $2,179. There are people who bought this and they're still paying it off. Yeah. <laughs> $55 a month. Loans, man. Wait, let me see. How long would that take to pay off? I'm just out of curiosity. Hold on. Let's say there's tax. Let's say the whole thing ends up being about $2,400, right? And divide that by what fifty five, it would take, all right, forty three months. That's not so bad. Was it four years? Less than it's like three and a half years. All right, it's not that bad. <laughs> still paying it off. They missed one payment. They're still paying it off. Yeah, because now they've garnered interest. Now I remember um, around this period of time, I borrowed a camcorder, yeah. and it was really cool. You know, but it was like one of these big ones. That's it. That's the end. We end on the video, the v videotape machines. So, so uh, the cheapest one I see here is a thousand dollars to get your feet wet in a camcorder. Right. And there's no brand, right? Hitachi. Oh, wait, no. That's for the battery. Huh. Well, Gino, I want to thank you so much for lasting this entire two hour <laughs> embarkment upon the 19, was it 88? 88 or yeah. 89? It feels like it might be 1990 by now. Um, <laughs> yeah. Thank you for putting up with the, uh, the journey. I know these can be almost kind of exhausting, but is the 88 wish book. And yeah, I had a great time, man. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, uh, you're very welcome. I, I, I want to thank you for bringing this to my attention. And I had a lot of fun as well doing this. Well, let's definitely pick another topic in the future and jump through it. I have a bunch of these old catalogs. Um, I had a blast. I want to wish you and your family a Merry Christmas, you know, of course, and a Happy New Year. I'm sure I'll talk to you throughout, but... I and I want to wish you and your and I want to wish you and your family a happy new year and a happy Hanukkah. Thank you. Hanukkah's early this year. So I'm gonna be in about two weeks from now. And uh yeah. Um what would you pick? If you could pick one item right off the top of your head, two items, two items out of this catalog, what would you have grabbed? Probably the best Yamaha keyboard or, <laughs> or, or, or keyboard in, in this. Yeah. And uh ooh. Probably Garfield tent. <laughs> no, probably the, the, if I was still a kid, I'd probably pick the ducktail sleeping bag. Yeah. It's badass. Well, you, now that you're an adult, you can just treat yourself to one. <laughs> <laughs> what would you pick Mark? Um, I would probably grab one of those full console stereos. Cause I have very expensive tastes. Oh would, yeah. Yeah. Um, I would probably, yeah, grab the Sony one. I really like that. I've been wanting one of those for a very long time. And the other thing would be maybe one of those game watches. Like, like the Qbert watch. It's pretty cool. Right. right. But yeah, there's, um, there's always something to, to want. And, um, eBay is the place where you can find a lot of it. So although we're not sponsored, we should be sponsored by eBay. <laughs> But um, Gino, Gino Cuddy can, of course, be found on YouTube. I'll put a link to his um, his channels and all. we'll try to compile all of the um, things that we talked about into links and, and post it. But if we forgot, if we mention your channel and we forgot to put it down there, just send us a message. We'll fix that. But um, Right on, you, Mark. 
Chino, again, I'll talk to you very soon. Um, just stay on the line.